I tell you, when you get this, you get this and you get, God begins to create faith in you. You don't have no problem worrying about living right because you will live right, praise God, because you know the authority of that word. You know blessings and curses, hallelujah. And you love God and you're going to stick with him. You're going to walk with him. Let me read this. Is this helping anybody? You say, well, if you pray for me tonight and I get healed, you think I'm going home in three days? And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way thy ha- as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that selfsame hour. Look at 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now, you know, if you're in something that, if, you, if you're in something and the Lord is convicting you, and, and, and he wants you to get it right, you know, if you ever, if he's ever there, you need to get it right. Because the devil's got a shot at you. But if you ain't got that, and and God don't speak to you, don't you sit around meditating, trying to find something you did 25, 30 years ago, or 10 years ago. Oh, I wonder if that's it. I wonder if that's it. Ronnie told last Wednesday night, I think it was, he let that cat out of the bag. He said, Paula never had stolen no watermelons, but she'd been a driver. <laughs> <laughs> she was an accessory before and after the fact. <laughs> and see what the devil will do with that. What the devil will do with that. You, he'll have you thinking, wonder what I did five years. Huh? Oh, it must have been that I done five years. It must have been when God told me to do that and I didn't do that. You know, that's bad, that's bad, it's bad, it's bad. But where did you take that? You took it and put it under the blood and repented and got right with God. And if the devil can bring you to that place, he'll hold you captive where you think, well, God can't heal me. God can't heal me. Look at somebody say it's under the blood. He's not going to hold me captive with that. The devil's not going to hold me captive with that. I'm going to get what's mine. It is God's will for you to be healed. You say, what if I want to go to the doctor and get some medicine? Go ahead. And if your child gets sick and it don't get better right quick, you take it to the doctor. But if it's something that you don't want to go to the doctor with, you want to believe God for, for yourself, not for somebody else. This body belongs to God and it belongs to me. I can do with it what I want to. Under God's laws. And if I got something and I want to go to the doctor, fine, I go to the doctor. But if I got something the doctor can't help me with, or I just don't want to feel, I, I can believe God. Come on now. Most of the things in my life, I've had to believe God for them because doctors couldn't help me. Are y'all with me? Raise your hand and say, thank God for doctors. Thank God for nurses. Thank God for medicine. Amen. Thank God for veterinarians. But I've prayed for dogs and they've been healed. My daughter was a missionary of the Dominican Republic for four years. She actually raised a cat that was dead. Huh? It was a pet for the little children. She raised it. She had typhoid fever how many times? Five times. I stayed on my face praying, crying at night when I would have been asleep, crying, praying, Jeanette praying. I'm crying, I'm praying. God, take care of my daughter. She was sick, very sick, almost to the point of death. She's in her room there in that orphanage, and, and, and she's laying there on that bed sick, 
And she felt arms go around her. Am I telling the truth, Ned? And she felt somebody hug her. And she looked and there wasn't nobody there. And they hugged, they hugged her up. You say, was well, Jesus? It could have been. Was it an angel? I don't know. I don't know who it was, but it was somebody God sent. And when they hugged her up, all of her fever left and she was instantly healed. You tell me healing ain't real. Glory to God. Isaiah wrote 50, Isaiah 53, he's amening. I'm going to read you something to help you. Establish what the will of God is. If you can establish what the will of God is, you can have it. Look at that. Look at, look at uh, 1 John. I had somebody in the prison one time I told you about this before. He said, I want you to agree with me something, brother. Boy, I want you to agree with me something. I said, I'm not going to agree with you unless you tell me what it is. I, I learned later just to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know, he said, well, uh, you know, they have visits at Stevenson. He said, I'm seeing this other woman and said, uh, she's going to be better for me in ministry because I'm going to get in the ministry when I get out of here. She's going to be better for me than my wife and I want you to agree with me that God will give me this woman. I said, I ain't agreeing with you, man, for that. <laughs> I said, it ain't the will of God. You dump your wife, pick up this other woman, and she's going to be good for you in ministry. I said, I ain't agreeing with you. He got mad at me. Man, I'm telling you, he got mad. I went back down there about two months later. He come up to me and he said, Brother Porter, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I see I was wrong. You know why he saw he was wrong? He got in the Word of God. The Word of God will correct you. Let me read this, 1 John 5. Bob Tienemann promised him a pair of Texas boots. He's one of these people always promising people something. Never did give the man these boots. The man come to me and said, he promised me them boots, he didn't give them. And I had on a pair of Texas boots. And God spoke to me and said, give the man your boots. I said, Lord, that ain't you. I'm flowing in the Holy Ghost, so he gets some messing with me. I said, Lord, that can't be you. These, these texts, I got them shine, Lord. They look good, these cowboy boots. I said, Lord. He said, give them to him. Next time you come down here, bring them to him. They'll just fit him. So next time I went down there, I give him them boots. He told me, he said, them things just fit. You know, it wasn't long after that, God gave me a pair of Tony Llama boots. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they make them in El Paso. I've been by the factory there. See, when you get to hearing the voice of God and you want healing, you want all this, you get in the voice of God, God going to talk to you some about straightening up some stuff and giving away. So they doing this and doing that. How I feel the anointing? I'm going to read this right here. I've got to give you, got to give you some word before we get out. Is this helping anybody? <laughs> reason I don't wear them Tony Lama beats, boots much is because it makes me about seven foot tall. I can't get through that door back there. <laughs> I like to wear them sometime. <laughs> I like it when Ricky Gillen was here. He, he's Ricky Gillen. He was the only one I could look down on. <laughs> How the weather down there, son? 